Okay, introduction to vector fields. So in this lecture, we'll, lecture, we'll define what a vector, a vector field is, talk a little bit about autonomous vector fields and how to draw them. So a drawing, a definition of vector fields. Uh, so we'll start in two dimensions and later we'll do higher dimensions. So a vector field, the assignment of a vector to every point in the plane. So here's a vector field. Here's a point in the plane and to that point, we give it this vector. So for example, we can make a short list of vectors and they're a short list of points and their corresponding vectors. So to the point zero, zero, we give the vector zero, zero. So let me draw my vector field out here. Zero, zero gets the vector zero, zero, which isn't that interesting. Uh, one, zero, this is a point that's out on the x-axis, one unit away. And if we plug in x equals two and y equals zero, we get the vector two, zero. So that's my x coordinate. That's my y coordinate. And I want to have the tail of the vector at the point one, zero. So that points on two units to the right. So if we have, let's set up another column here. Um, say one comma one, then my x component will be two and my y component will be minus one. So that would be a point here. That's my point minus one. And I want to point a vector that goes two units to the right and one unit down. So that's that vector. And if I was at the point, say zero one, which is on the y-axis right here, my vector would be zero minus one. And so that means we'll be pointing down one unit. So we can figure out like if we're at minus one, one, here, x is minus one, so I want to go two units in the x direction and one unit down, and I'd have a vector pointing that way. So you can draw in the vectors. We want to be able to draw in vector, vector fields a little faster than just drawing lots of points. So when we get to eigenvalues and eigenvectors of vector fields, that'll help us in sketching these things. Couple of definitions, an autonomous vector field does not depend on T, right? A time dependent vector field. It depends only on the place where you are. So this vector field, it only depends on what point you're at. So an autonomous system of differential equations can be written like this, dx dt equals f of xy, dy dt equals g of xy. One way to think about these things, dx dt, this is a velocity of the whole thing is a velocity, velocity vector. It's telling us where to go and how fast to go, right? So if we have a vector pointing in this direction, it tells us to go down this way pretty fast. So our differential equations have vector fields on the right of them. And that's one of the reasons why we're interested in them. So drawing vector field is kind of like drawing a slope field. We don't want to plot a whole lot of points, but use our reasoning to figure out what the vector field looks like. So the vector field we have here is 2y minus 3x plus 2y. And what does that vector field look like? Well, we want to look at these components and see where there is zero. So X component over here is 2y. X component equals 0 or y equals 0. And that's the x-axis, right? So along the line y equals 0, the x component is 0, which means all our vectors will be up and down. The y component is minus 3x plus 2y. And the y component equals zero for where you just solve this for y and you get y equals three halves x. And what that means is that if the y component is zero, all our vectors are pointing either left or right. So we can draw an x-axis and a y-axis. This is y equals zero, 
And all the vectors on the x-axis have to point up or down. And then this is y equals 3 halves x. And all the vectors on this line have to point either left or right. So on y equals 0, what's the y component, right? Because on y equals 0, there's no x component. All the vectors up or down. Well, the y component is 3 minus 3x plus 2 times 0, because we know y equals 0. So it's just minus 3x. So if x is positive, that's out here on the right, my vector field is, my y component is negative. So all my vectors are pointing down. If x is positive, uh, if x is negative, then I get a positive number here. And all my y components are positive, and the x component is 0. So my vectors point up. Great. On y equals 3 halves x, the y component is 0. Everything is pointing left or right. But the x component is 2y, which is 2 times 3 halves x, which equals 3x. So on this line, I have no y component, um, only an x component. When x is positive, and up here in quadrant one, x is positive, my vectors point to the right. Oops, it should get smaller as I get into the origin. And when x is negative, which is down here in the fourth quadrant, my vectors point out to the left. So in this area here, my vectors should be pointing down and to the right a little bit. And here they should be pointing in between, in this area, they should be pointing down and to the left. More down when they're close to the y-axis, more to the left when they're closer to this line. And up here they should be going out like this, and more vectors like that. So there's some kind of swirling motion going along here. A solution curve to this equation is going to be something like in a slope field where your tangent to the vectors as you work your way through the vector field. And so this has got some kind of spiraling out from the origin kind of action. So that's what a uh, vector field does for us, and it lets us to draw solutions to these kinds of equations and figure out what they look like. So Maple can actually draw a vector field for you very nicely. This is an example of it. This is on the right, the vector field with correct lengths. So the vectors are of different lengths. As you go out from, um, from zero, the vectors get larger, right? Y goes to infinity, X goes to infinity, dy, dat. And dx dt get very big. But if you're close to zero um, for these sorts of vector fields, the vectors are very short. But it becomes a little hard to see what's going on in this area because all the vectors are very small. So this is a the same vector field, but instead of trying to keeps a proportionality between how long the vectors are. Right? We're just going to um, make all the vectors the same length. And that makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So for this vector field, if we pick a starting point, our curve goes up that way and back that way. If we pick this as a starting point, our curve is tangent to these vectors and goes off that way. Then they have another type of curve that comes down that way. Another curve that comes down that way. This is called a saddle. As it turns out, there's two directions. Um, one is right here and one is like that, where all the vectors are gonna be pointing in towards the origin. And then there's a direction out, all the vectors are pointing away 
And so on this line, for example, what we have is that our vectors are actually, well, let's actually look at this line. So if you think about a point on this line, it has a vector going out, but it also has its own vector, right? So the vector for the point starts at the origin, comes out to here, and then at that point, we assign it to those two vectors. These things are multiples of each other. So these cross lines here, sort of structure our vector field, are actually going to be the eigenvalue, eigenvectors of the matrix involved, right? So once we find the eigenvectors, we can actually sketch out the matrix very quickly. So that is a very brief introduction to vector fields.